crowd um, with this situation. It's really a bummer when like when I'm telling one of the stories and something terrible happens, like I was telling, you know, when you know, I was talking to you guys about uh, the Nika revolts, like normally, like I could see your faces, like your jaws open, like I can't believe he just massacred 30,000 of his own people and just it did not have the same impact online. Anyways, geography of the Arabian Peninsula, Arabia and you. So, the Arabian Peninsula. Normally, this is the time where I'd say, who thinks they can find the Arabian Peninsula? And then a bunch of people would say, raise their hands, and I would say, yes, Sahil, show us where the Arabian Peninsula is. And then he'd be like, oh, it's this thing? Yeah, this is the Arabian Peninsula. It's a peninsula. Water, three sides. So we already know it's probably going to be good for trading. So, here it is. Uh, I think Miss Patel said she thought of desert, and we see, yeah, there's a lot of desert over there. And by the way, this is from space. Isn't that cool? I like space. I want to go there one day. Importance of the peninsula. And you need to realize the big deal is that it is in the center of all. So we talked about Constantinople. And yeah, Constantinople is central to Europe, Asia, and Africa. But if you look at the Middle East, I mean, they call it the Middle East because it's in the middle, too. So you've got Europe right here, Asia, Africa. And it's particularly um, close to the Indian subcontinent, which is going to be awesome because there's going to be so much trade and interactions with India. Hello, Matthew. Good to see you, sir. I see you. Um, see your name pop up and um, hope that you're listening and stuff. All right. Daddy. Now, I have my vitamin today. Yes, you did have your vitamin today. All right. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> so it is going to be a trade hub as well. The Arabs are going to be an incredibly important middleman in this trade because here's the thing. The Arabian Peninsula, like Isha said, like we saw in that, is a lot of desert. And Aiden doesn't want to cross a desert. That's really tough. It's hot. He will get sweaty and stinky. You got to carry a lot of supplies, things like that. And so the Arabs are going to specialize in this kind of travel. So those tribes are going to have a monopoly on this trade, and it's going to be awesome. So we see some of the earliest caravans in all of human history coming from the Arabian Peninsula, you know, going and trading with the folks up in Mesopotamia and good stuff like that. And if you do not remember what a caravan is from last year, first off, shame on you. And some kids are like, but I wasn't in your class last year. Well, still shame on you. You should have been in my class last year. It would have been a great time. Really, it would have been. Except for the spring when I didn't get to see you guys. And then it was sad. Anyways, caravans, groups of merchants traveling together for protection. Because let's face it, if Sarah and Madeline have a whole bunch of stuff. They don't want someone to steal that stuff because guess what? We have banditas like Mia and bandits like Simon who will see your stuff and try to kill you and take that stuff. So Sarah and Madeline instead say, hey, Claire Bear, Isha, Emmy, Jacob, Aya, Mide, Onedo, Celine, anybody else, let's trade together. Let's travel in one big group. So then when Mia and Simon see that giant group and they know that Aiden has a battle axe in the back of his cart, they are not going to want to go and try to mess with them. So it's traveling together for mutual protection. Oh, yeah. So Arabian Peninsula, why is it important? It's because it's in the middle. Hello, Blake. Good to see you, darling. And it's in the middle of Europe, Africa, Asia, and we have caravans going. So hopefully you're able to go write this down relatively quickly or know that you can go back because... Time. I'm glad. What? Oh man. Well, I'm glad you don't want to kill your classmates because that'd be like weird. And I'd definitely talk to Miss Payne about it. I'd be like, um, I'm gonna look at Aiden here. He's having murderous thoughts. <laughs> so, this is like an example of a camel caravan. Notice the people are walking and the camels are carrying the stuff because you don't want to, you know, be the straw that breaks the camel's back. <laughs> you don't want to be the Sahil that breaks the camel's back. <laughs> okay. Uh, F minus minus to everybody. Now, here's the thing. Not only did they trade stuff, they traded knowledge. And this is what I love because I'm a big fan of knowledge. Amir gets me. He knows how awesome knowledge is. Uh, and so, for example, things like how to make paper that the Chinese invented, the Arabs are like, hey, um, we should go and uh, bring this knowledge over there. And Europeans are like, sweet, we don't want to use animal skins anymore, stuff like that, the vellum. 
So it's going to be great for trading knowledge. Now, another thing, too, with the proximity of the Arabian Peninsula to Greece, because we see Greece is right here, Arabian Peninsula right there, um, and their numerous interactions with the Byzantine Empire, because they were always fighting and murdering each other, we wind up getting a lot of Greek knowledge saved. Because Europe will not be trusted to save that Greek knowledge, because Europe is going to have the Dark Ages, and it is going to be a bad time. Because... When Jacob is like, hmm, do I want to freeze to death or do I want this book that I can't read? He's going to choose burning the book so he doesn't freeze to death. And when Simon the Bar -bar Barbarian comes through looking for treasure, he's going to wind up destroying those books because, he, you know, maybe some gold is hidden in or under or behind the books. So we're going to see lots of destruction of knowledge, which is going to be really, really sad. Anna still cries about it today because she's like, man, all the things we could have known that we can't. It's okay, Anna. You can get over it. And we know Europeans, why did they lose so much knowledge? What event happened that caused them to go into these dark ages? A fall of something that was like really big and all these people came in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hello, the Byzantine Empire. Well, not the Byzantine. Roman. Yeah. You know. The barbarians are okay. No yeah, exactly. The fall of the Western Roman Empire. It fell. And then the bar -bar barbarians like Aya came in and trashed the place. And then we're going to have the Vikings trash the place. And we're going we're gonna to have a lot of people trash the place. Okay, and here's one of the things. Because of the awesome location of the Arabian Peninsula, when the Prophet Muhammad died, um, it is going to be the staging grounds for the spread of Islam. And we're going to see that Islam is going to spread very quickly, very, very far. And a lot of it has to do with the, you know, the Arabian Peninsula's, you know, situation, which you could think about how, you know, Christianity and Judaism are going to be able to spread once again because they're in a similar location. Now it could go forth. You know, if that was in the middle of like, if Muhammad was in the middle of South Africa, his options to spread his faith would have been severely limited um, because just with geogra geographic location. Yes, yes, yes. But now let's get to the good stuff. All right, let's get to the good stuff here. I know. Some of you are thinking, oh, uh, Mr. is already so good. That is a unique view, my dear. <laughs> uh, October 29th would definitely be the wrong date. I'll have to go back and look and see what the dealio is with that. It should be October... Um, October nows, <laughs> like tonight, 11.59. All right. As we heard, the Arabian Peninsula is mostly desert. Yes, mostly. 75% at least. And because of desertification, it's actually technically growing every single moment. Isn't that kind of scary? Just like how the Sahara Desert is growing every single moment. You're not scared, Aiden? Well, guess what? If you live next to the Sahara Desert and you see your town getting engulfed in sand, yeah, little tear. It's scary. Now, it is super duper hot. And because it's a desert, guess what? It's dry. Temperatures, you know, 120 degrees. Can you imagine that? That's like so hot. You can go crack an egg on like your car like hood and then go and make a uh, make an omelet just like that. Um, but here's the thing. It's super duper hot me day during the day. But then during night, it drops below freezing because it doesn't retain any of the heat. So, like, it's bad both ways. Both ways. And usually it is in a drought period. Now, on a non-drought year, guess how much rain they get? Three to four inches. Yeah, we have rainstorms, like, that in, like, a couple days give us more than three to four inches of rain. And that's how much rain they get in a year. Now, what's really cool is, I like... I can't see you. Uh, you're, where are that? We'll just do a little mute skis there. All right. So 
I have the power. <laughs> Anyways, it's um, they do have thunderstorms and stuff like that, and apparently it's really cool because like Selena will look up in the sky, she'll see the lightning, and she'll see the rain clouds and the rain, but it evaporates before it even touches the ground because it's so stinking dry. I know, right? Although there is an awesome, uh, it does snow in the Sahara every now and then, and let's see. Sahara. Uh, I showed my students a couple years ago this uh, might have even been you guys. I don't know. I don't think so. But look at that. Snow on the Sahara Desert. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Now, of course, it like melted super fast. But isn't that so cool? <laughs> Anyways. Woo. Where'd my PowerPoint go? Boop. So there are cool things like that. All right. Now. One of the problems that you're going to have is because it is so flat, um, the wind will just go through. And because of that wind, you get sandstorms, which sandstorms, um, how many people have touched sandpaper? Now, imagine at super fast speeds, the feeling of sandpaper all over any of your exposed skin. Oh, it just sounds great, doesn't it? Yeah, sounds Horrible. So sandstorms are actually super duper dangerous. And one of the reasons, uh, besides the sun, that people are going to completely try to cover their bodies as much as possible. And it, I'll tell you, if you've ever gotten sand in your eye, you know how painful that is. So plant life does not really, not much plant life, not much wildlife in the desert. But yet people are going to adapt, excuse me, to survive. Now, adaptations. Does anyone know what it means to adapt or to have an adaptation? Aiden, sir? Um, we are like addicted to it or? No, not addicted. Yeah. It sounds similar, but that no, that's not the direction we're going in. Um, to get used to your close charity, um, it's similar to get used to, but not quite. Uh, Miss Lou? She's like, oh, that's what I was gonna say. Now I'm trying to Google the answer too fast. All right, so we're gonna go with Miss Patel, who is ready. Um, we learned this in science where um Sweet. animals have to adapt to their um wherever they are. So they so it was hot, so they had to adapt to like get getting used to it. But how getting used to it? What's they oh to change based on your environment? Hmm. Yeah, that does look like a Googler. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Poor Miss Lou. Or maybe she just couldn't type or something like that. Oh, that, that, oh, or not type speak. Okay. So she has broken her mic. So she has to Google. No, I'm kidding. I'm just being mean. I'm sorry. I don't mean any of that. I don't believe it. So, um, yeah, it's when you change. Now, you get used to your environment by changing just a little bit. So, for example, one of the ways they change as much as, you know, um, Campbell doesn't want to, like, move around from place to place, she has to be a nomad to survive. Because if she's like, I'm gonna just create a farm here in the middle of my desert, guess what? Her farm is going to fail because it will not grow any food because there's not enough water. So Campbell becomes a nomad. We talked about nomads last year where we have them going from place to place, place to place. Please stop. Like, do I really have to keep on going and like changing the chat? Like, it's not cool. It's talking across my classroom. So the nomads are going to move from place to place. And the nomads of the Arabian Peninsula are called the Bedouins. All right? The Bedouins. And you can kind of like bed o in. See? Easy. bed o in. And the Bedouins are going to be nomadic herders. And they're going to live off their animals and go from place to place in the desert. Because the, the Bedouins are going to go and adapt to be able to survive in this situation with their, you know, long, loose clothes and going from oases to oases, they're going to be the people controlling the trade. And as we said, they're going to have these long, loose clothes for a couple of reasons. First off, you don't want the sun shining down on you. Now, this guy's got an awesome tan. That's great. But guess what? You could still have your skin get burned. You could still get all that UV rays not causing good things. You can go and still have your skin get dried out from this. So they cover up their skin. Now, they also typically have their heads covered. I know some of you are thinking, but it's so hot. Why would you want long sleeves and things like that? Well, first off, protection from the sun. Secondly, how many of you have ever gotten sweaty before? 
I know it might be a little embarrassing at your age with your changing bodies, how now you start to sweat in places you never sweat before and you start getting stinky and you need deodorant and things like that. Well, you do. Um, but that's just part of the joys. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. Your sweat is designed to keep you cool. Now, in climates such as Maryland, where we have high humidity, sweating is very uncomfortable. And sometimes when it's really hot and humid out there and you're sweating, you're like, I feel like I'm moving in a bowl of soup and it's the worst. But if you're in a super dry environment, when you sweat, then it evaporates quickly. And that evaporation is a refreshing feeling. And you're like, ah, my internal air conditioner basically is working and that's good. So then it actually keeps you cool having the long sleeves and everything to keep it on you, right? Isn't that awesome? Um, and also uh, in the Arabian Peninsula, there are like really humongous flies. I have um, a friend who served in Iraq and he was telling me afterward, like the flies were like, like the size of golf balls and like they would bite you and it would hurt so bad. And so you don't want your skin open for to get fly bites. And of course, the sandstorms we talked about, you don't want sandpaper feeling going um, all over your body. So this is how the Bedouins adapted to survive in the desert. And there they would control the trade routes and make lots of moolah. So here's an example of what the desert can look like. Small shrubs. This is not what you might think of often with all the rolling, rolling hills of sand. But there's this too. Hmm. Hmm. Now we have oases, and I just want to show you, like, look at the stark contrast. Nothingness, life. Nothingness, life. Oases are that cool. We're just wham, bam, in the middle of the desert. We have water and, therefore, plants. It's awesome. The oases would be critical. If we did not have any oases, the Arabian Peninsula would not be able to have the life that it does. People wouldn't be able to be in there because you need to have water to live. And here's the nice thing too, after Onedo has been walking around um, all day, she is able to go and rest under a tree and get some shade, which will be much cooler. You know, outside 120 degrees under the shade, it might be just be like 100. Um, oases, uh, they vary in size. Some can be very large. Some could be, you know, relatively small. Um, the larger ones, <coughs> towns and then cities are going to be created um around them aiden stop spamming the chat okay dude thanks bro now here is the thing aiden says huh i could walk around the desert all day every day finding new oases or i can build a house by the oases have water not have to walk around everywhere and then tax people who go to the oases to use them. And so we're gonna have some Arabs becoming sedentary there. Bless you, Celine. <laughs> oh, I miss you guys. So sedentary is the opposite of nomad, and that's what we had during our Neolithic Revolution where people said, I can stay in one place, hooray! And the most popular things are gonna be dates, peaches, and grains. No, Isha, it's not what you do on a Saturday night. A date is actually a delicious fruit, okay? Um, and they are really super good. The best way, in my opinion, for dates is you... So they're kind of like... Um, they look almost like giant raisins, um, although they taste much better than a raisin. They have a big pit in there. You take the pit out. You stuff it with cream cheese. Mm -hmm. But oh, here's the, here's the piece de resistance. You wrap it in bacon, put it in the oven. Oh, yeah. C'est magnifique. It is so good. Yeah, Mia, but not what you do on a Saturday night. I know you're very lovely, but date's the fruit, my dear. Date's the fruit. Um, but the date is actually going to be super duper important. Um, not only is it excellent for me to be able to make a couple jokes during this lesson, but also dates grow on trees. You might be thinking, oh, okay, lots of things grow on trees, Mr. Kenny, but they don't have a lot of trees in the Arabian Peninsula. And these trees have leaves. So Isha's like, well, I could totally make a thatch roof for my house with these leaves. Um, you know, you can actually use the wood to make the home for it. You could use the leaves to make fibers for ropes. Um, it's so important that besides just the food, that the date was called the mother and the aunt of the Arabs. Because without the date plant, it would be also extremely difficult for people to be able to survive. You've never tried it? Well, you are missing out. 
like I said, uh, most people eat them dried. Uh, you can eat them fresh. And my favorite way, like I said, is stuffed with cream cheese and wrapped in bacon. Because, oh my goodness, it is so good. I made that for like a party one time. And I swear I ate so many. So many. Once again, here's another picture of an oasis. And I know, oh, this is so frustrating. We're going to have to save the last bull, or the last little spark for tomorrow because, alas, it is 11.15. It is time for us to say au revoir. Um, I thank you for your attentiveness. I thank you for your awesomeness. I thank you um, just for you being you because I miss you guys. I have stopped the recording.